That seems fair to me. Fairness isn't I don't the really issue. Think you're wrong. Wrong. Well, you're wrong. well, if you don't know what no. fair is, you can't make a judgment on what fair is. You can't accept it by any reason. You can't. Donnybrook is made possible through the generous support of the members of KETC. Hey, thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. Great to have you with us, and we hope you're also with us on September the 27th when we broadcast from the Sheldon during Donny Bash. And we'll tell you a little later in the program how you can join us for that big fundraiser for the Nine Network of Public Media. First, however, let's meet the panelists for this week's discussion, starting with the media veteran herself, Wendy Weiss. And Mr. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. There he is, Ray Hartman from St. Louis Magazine. And with a shirt that's proud that it's Flag Day, Mr. Alvin Reed from the St. Louis American, STLMag.com and beyond. And Wendy also has the red, white, and blue on. And so we want to give you credit for that, Wendy. This is Absolutely. Alvin and I are the underclassmen. We have the, <laughs> the team spirit in the yearbook. Right. And we want to thank our friends at the Gatesworth for making this program possible. I'm sure the Gatesworth has flags flying today. Ray Hartman. It was kind of a strange turn of events, a surprise for me anyway, when uh, Lida Cruson's administration, she of course, the mayor of the city of St. Louis, announced that she wants to part ways with Paul McKee, the developer who has been saying he's going to transform North St. Louis since he started buying that property around 2003. And he had been awarded major tax credits from the state, lots of assistance on the local level. But the Cruz administration said they were not too happy with um, his tax credits, that he didn't seem to buy the property that justified the tax credits. That also resulted in a lawsuit against his company by the attorney general this week. And also, the Cruz administration said, what have you done? You don't have any partners. You haven't turned over any dirt. We have nothing to see for our longtime relationship. So what do you think? Was it about time that Paul McKee get cut from his relationship with the city of St. Louis? So you just want me to give a full-throated defense of Paul McKee? That's easy. No, why not? No, I, I will say this. First of all, I think that he, there's no question that he bit off more than he could chew. And I think that there's very, I have a real problem with the fact that properties were run down on his watch. I'm not going to give a, a, just a complete, be an apologist. However, I agree with Lacey Clay that the NGA project wouldn't have happened had Paul McKee not stepped up. I agree with uh, Lacey Clay that the economic development world in St. Louis has been dramatically biased against North St. Louis for decades. And I think that Paul McKee came in with the best of intentions. He did fail on a lot of levels, and I understand people's impatience with it. And I have no idea on the tax credit thing. That'll be lit litigated, whether he did things right or wrong. That's above my pay grade. But I will say this on behalf of Paul McKee. You don't, no one fails that, that didn't try. The only people that fail are ones that, that showed up and, and got up to, in the game, that, get, that, that tried. And so few developers and so few people have tried North St. Louis. I'm not going to vilify the guy. Well, let me vilify it. Right? <laughs> Knock yourself let me go after you. <laughs> Knock yourself out. I'm sure there'll be a okay. nice line. Okay. Well, well, I mean, for, first of all, you know, to, to give him credit for the NGA, that, that would have been just sure happenstance. I mean, when he started doing this uh, 15 years ago, there was no thought of the NGA even moving. So the fact that he did nothing on the north side except, you know, have derelict buildings, and all of a sudden, years later, we get the NGA and go, well, thank you, Paul. If, if he had anything to do with it, it was just by coincidence. I mean, and, and the other thing, when I looked at his projects in the very beginning, this thing about transforming the north side was like phase four. I mean, at first he was going to get uh, land just a, a, around Maggie O'Brien's, you know, the west right. edge of downtown, and then do something else. And the north side always seemed to be held out as, a, you know, I'm going to do this but never even getting around to mm -hmm. it. Well, I agree with you about the yeah. downtown yeah. west part coming first. Yeah. I, I was cynical about that. However, Lacey Clay's piece in the Business Journal this week, he talks, the, uh, and he was involved with Roy Blunt, cross party lines on the NGA, and he feels, or maybe I yeah. wasn't there. But don't forget, no, Ray, he, the, the he, federal he, government can take that can property I, by eminent domain anyway, me. so he they feels, don't really need he, a, 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 a guy can I like finish Paul the McKay. But well, let me finish I mean, the sentence but, that he said in his piece that without Paul McKee's effort, 
aggressively on the NGA, it wouldn't happen. Now, well, he was there. Okay, I, no, I, I think I that this is at least an argument. Elvin. Paul McKee's not the only guy who had his eyes on North St. Louis. I guess you're forgetting McCormick, Barron, Salazar, which has right. huge developments there, right. and all the guys who've been developing Old North, right. the area near uh, Crown Candy okay. and beyond. If you take your car and drive through North St. Louis, you'll see there are developments. Yeah. If you look for Paul McKee's work, you'll find nothing. You say he right. bit off more than he could chew. He, he didn't did. chew anything. He right. chewed nothing. Wait, wait. He, he chewed and spit out. Uh, Small guys. Cir circumventing the law, apparently. Well, At least that's what he's alleged to do. And look, that little town in Iowa was economically, uh, you know, avoided like North St. Louis. And Robert Preston showed up with 76 trombones. And everybody exactly said, like, you're you know, exactly wait a minute. Right. I'm not saluting this. This is, was a guy that looks to me was getting over. And he was getting over on a part of town that is hard to defend. And you mentioned, like, well, I'm not excusing him for the derelict properties. Well, no. wait, the first people. The first people to say this is suspect, this is not right, were the people that lived up there. Well, and, and the, nobody esteemed, listened and the to esteemed Beavis Shock. Yes, right. Who nobody said, listened. Who said, you know, right. that he had right. his doubts about the plans the minute they were announced, you right. know, that nobody would be able to pull this off. I, I also think that we have to go back to the Rams pulling up stakes and leaving town. That sort of, I think that changed a lot of stuff in North St. Louis. I think it changed the the molecules, if you will, in North St. Louis. And I think that, I think Paul McKee, I do think his heart was in the right place. I think he probably had the best of intentions, but the road to and, and nowhere say, is paved with good intentions. If he violated state law when it comes to the tax credits, and there's certainly a case that he might have, then he should pay the price. I'm not saying that, and I agree with you completely. The North St. Louis thing, I thought, that part of it is really inexcusable where, where neighbors saw neighborhoods that were undervalued because they were North St. Louis just run down. I'm not defending that. I don't think, and I'm not trying to be defensive when I say that. I just, but I think in the context of how little there have been people really stepping up in North St. Louis, I think that. There, I, it'll, there have been people who stepped up points, more than he has. Let, let right. me put it this way. It'll be interesting to see. If you think Ida Cruson mm -hmm. is bringing in, like, the Little Sisters of the Poor and a bunch of pure, you know, is driven well, snow. They're actually come moving in. out. There'll be no. pure Little Sisters are actually no, moving I'm out. saying that. Yeah. Let's no. wait and see yeah, who you know, comes the way in. Sue, the way Sue Lyard Lafayette okay. Square came back was organic, right. block by block. That's right. It wasn't one guy having control over everything. And, and so that nobody could, worse. you know, if you own a piece of property right. then, and you're in the McKee footprint, okay. you couldn't do anything. Right. You know, the that. funny thing, Ray, is the Little right. Sisters of the Poor have been there for like 100 that, years that, in that, that, I was using yeah. an analogy. And, well, but they are they closing literally, up shop, right? Right? Yeah. If the city of, okay. If the city of St. Louis had analogy. put up, if you do this, you will get this from us. Instead of just presenting this all to Paul McKee, there would be people in line yeah. to come in there and, and try to get a piece why, of that. And this is why this is why new leadership is it's always desperate. is always a good idea yes. in a city in our stage of you know maybe okay, re right. regeneration. If Got to move on. Mm -hmm. Want to ask you, Alvin Reed, about Claire McCaskill, who actually apparently was um, parodied last night on the Seth Meyer program, which I missed, but essentially. Senator McCaskill said she was going to have an RV tour through the state of Missouri. And instead of entirely traveling by RV, she added one stop in St. Joseph, and she flew there by her private plane. And to go home at night, she has homes in Kansas City as well as in uh, St. Louis. And so she flew her private plane to sleep in her own bed. Well, now the Republicans are saying, hey, this is a phony RV tour. I'm thinking... This is kind of like Josh Hawley working out in the middle of the day in Columbia. It has nothing to do with the real issues. I don't care how she gets to these stops. What do you think? I'm thinking, do you want to win or not? I'm thinking in this world, you don't say I'm on an RV tour and you get on a plane and you fly any place. If you're on an RV tour, you sit down on the RV and you go from town to town to town and you sweat it out and you buck it out and you just do what you got to do. Look. Are they making a bigger deal of it than maybe it should be? Okay, you could argue that. But at the same time, they got a point. Stop playing these games, okay, because they get thrown back in your face. Do you want to be the senator again? Well, then be the same. You know, I, I hate. I think you're. I think you're onto something, and I think a lot of it has to do with what just happened to Governor Eric Greitens. There is this 
uh, because of what is going on in Washington, there is this zero tolerance for hypocrisy. I think the entire country was almost hypocritical for a very long time. You know, this bipartisan this and bipartisan that. And the gloves are off right now. And so every move that you make is going to be under the microscope and candidates who uh, suddenly it's a suddenly it's a really close race according to the newspapers yeah, but, uh, well but, this is such a fabricated I issue though i mean who really cares if she's on her rv two days it's and all about flies. presenting oh. yourself to be something that you're not really well, i think, think that's what that was the I, undoing see, I, of I, eric right i try to I get worked up about it but i can't well, it's, I, it seems really petty but I'm sure to some people who would say, "But wait a second, this was for the this was about the veterans." Well, and I think it's a manufactured crisis that has say. nothing to do I, with not, opioids or jobs or taxes. Or, 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 wait, wait, it also has nothing to do really with travel. If you just fly drive by or fly by this story, you would think she was flying around on taxpayers' money. One of the things Claire likes to point out is that she has a rich husband, Joe, and. It's the only, the great irony They were $300,000 uh, uh, no, behind Joe, in their payments just, on that plane a couple you, years ago. Okay, she has a wealthy husband, Joe, and she has found the only wealthy person in a, in a country whose wealth is resented by Republicans. That that all of a sudden, they all, they all turn into Bernie Sanders oh when it comes to her having a private plane. And it's like... You know, she yeah. didn't do anything wrong here, and and I I understand what you say about the optics, but she did zero wrong. There was no taxpayer money. It's a zero story. But, there but it's one of those that there's, there's like something no, going on in Missouri. It's zero. The you previous, said no. that you were going to be on an RV tour and you weren't in the RV the whole time. Just like the governor take, said take, that he was a you family have to take man. The criticism. No, 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 no. Don't bring him. Ma into this. Manufactured is like no, exactly Alvin right. threw the last dinosaur into the La Brea tar pit, and I'm like, I wasn't even in California. I, you know, I, but if I'm on <laughs> okay. a, a plane, it wasn't a jet, as the, as a the president story. said, it was a propeller plane. But if I'm on that, not on the RV. Oh, come on. Maybe on. I shouldn't. You all know it's, it's uh, about as important as where Josh Holly works out and what yeah, time of the day. It's like right, being mad at Josh story. Holly because he wears blue jeans now. Right. Uh, I go, well, wait a minute. He's you, a man of the people, yeah, Bill. I, I mean, yeah. th this is just, I, I, I don't I agree. see the, either of that right. big deals. Wendy, I want to ask you about what used to be known as uh, Northwest Plaza. I think it's called Northwest Commons right now. And the St. Louis County Council has asked for Steve Stanger's dealings with that to be taken to a legislative body, maybe or not a, an investigative body, maybe the state attorney general. In short, after uh, months of hearings, an ethics committee of the St. Louis County Council has determined that Steve Stanger got $365,000 from the developers of the mall. They went to his camp, the money went to his campaign, not to him personally, but also that he personally worked out the deal as opposed to giving this to career employees who ordinarily work out the real estate. And the sum and substance is that if you look at this project, it would have been better for the taxpayers of the county to have bought space for their offices as opposed to leasing them at the mall developed by his campaign donors. So do you think he's in trouble? I think it seems, it, speaking of, you know, speaking of a, a, a bit convoluted, when Sam Page, who is in charge of the, the Ethics Commission on the County Council, when, when he refuses to flatly accuse, he said, we don't have any, it's nothing, you know, we don't have anything, we don't have Stenger criminal. dead to rights, you know, in terms of this criminal activity, but we just can't afford the, the the manpower, the the investigators, we can't afford to to look into this, and that's the only reason we're going outside. I just think that seems that mm -hmm. seems a little it, um, lacking in you know a robust statement. It is absolutely what crass partisan politics, partisan meaning anti stanger, and and I think reasonable people can question. The, the relationship between Garner's huge money and the fact that he's the, the developer there. Yeah, the donors, and, and, and the, there's no problem there. But there's absolutely no, even a scintilla of evidence that they presented that it's criminal, and they're calling for a criminal investigation when they don't have any basis for that. And keep in mind, the county council did vote for the Northwest Plaza thing, as they did Bob McCullough's uh, pension, as they did the ice rink at Creep Corps. And in all three cases, with... 
Sam Page in the leadership or in, in the front, they all, in all three cases, after supporting something, they said afterwards they didn't know what they were legislating. Yeah, four years ago, and that's it was, ridiculous. everybody was corrupt, okay? Charlie Dooley was corrupt. And didn't say that. all this instrument was thrown out there because the golden boy was coming in, Steve Stinger. Yeah, look into it. Look, look, yeah, look into all of it. It needs to be looked into because, look, if you wanted to find a politician that reminds me more of the president of the United States than Steve Stinger, then you go ahead and you find him. This, this is the exact same thing. This is do as I say, say not, not as, as I, I do. do. I'm the county executive now, and I'll do whatever I want to do. Well, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't know about the Trump Stenger thing or the Greitens <laughs> McCaskill combination. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big fan of, of Trump or Stenger, but I don't see that. Uh, no, what, what, Tr Trump what, doesn't pretend that. You, you should be righteous. Stenger may, maybe does a little bit. So what's the crime you think they should well, be? Well, no, it may not be a crime, but you know what, well, that's Ray? What you, I really I'm think, sorry, that's why you have well, criminal on investigations. I think that yeah. when you're um, the county executive yeah. and your branch of government is working out leases with your donors who gave you $365,000, yeah. that's a huge conflict test. of interest. Yeah, uh, especially maybe. when your public works director said, we're making a deal with the devil. You know, this, and, and you didn't have the professional staff look at it. Instead, your campaign chair was in charge of and, the and lease. It was $20. And this it is wacky. Was, and I'm just throwing figures. But if it was, if we had bought it, it had been $20 a square foot. But your deal got you a big old donation, and we paid $40 a square foot. Something's wrong. I don't right. think it's something's and wrong. And he's defiant in the same way that the president of okay. the United That's what States I'm saying. is you know, and, defiant. And the county council is always arguing that they need their own lawyer, they need more staff. Apparently they do. And he's talking about, well, I'm sorry, but this, but, but this playing this uh, Montavani boogeyman card where this is just a bunch of, you know, trumped up stuff. Trumped up, no pun intended. <laughs> but, you know, that this is well, this has to do with Montavani. Yeah. I have well, not heard, does. and I know that Mark oh, Montavani is a lovely does. man, but well, I have I, not heard one wait. person. No, it the actually Trachis does. is not a Republican. Uh, wait, right. you know. No, I think, I think it does, but the point yeah. is this. And, and, and it's people that, you know, just like there's a lot of people like you that matter about uh, uh, Stanger beating Charlie, and that's No, fine. no, no, no. Hold, the hang on. Is, Let me clarify true. this right, right now. Right. I could care less that he beat yeah. Charlie because Charlie was beatable. Right. What he right. went about was asinine, and, and quite frankly, right. I think it was racist. And if you right. ever think that I'm going to forget that, right. it will right. never happen. Well, okay, so, but I'm just right. saying that okay. it was, mm. there is the political mm. things which people are entitled mm. to. I'll go back to the same thing. First of all, as it's to your point. It's not criminal. I, I think well, and also, Sam Page And also criminal. to your point, yeah. the county, okay. the county the each one of these has a $50,000 legislative aid, each one of the councilmen, and they can't get informed about the stuff they're voting on. Yeah. All it right. makes no sense. Ray, thanks so much, and thank you, everybody for planning to join us in September. If you haven't made those plans yet, we encourage you to uh, join us September the 27th at the Sheldon for the next Donnie Bash. Here are some of the details. Well, another Thursday night, another Donnie Brook, and we have more to come, but right now we're asking you to take a moment to give us a call to say thank you. We really appreciate having Donnie Brook on the air. We appreciate having your turn. We like having this kind of discord here in the St. Louis region. I'm Kate Durbin and I am here with the nine team, the folks sitting behind me who are ready to take your calls. They are ready to take your calls to help you become a member of the nine network. And we do have very many special gifts to say thank you for that. Of course, the one that we're really excited about is Donnie Bash. That is happening on September 27th, live at the Sheldon, right in our backyard. And before, the taping of Donnie Brook. It's um, actually taping live of Donnie Brook, and you'll see it in your homes. There is about an hour long reception where you'll be able to meet with other people who are members of the Nine Network, talk about the happenings of the day, and, and maybe more importantly, be able to spend some time with the cast members of Donnie Brook, share your opinions, find out a little bit more about them. They find out a little bit more about you. Then you move into the Sheldon Auditorium where Donnybrook happens live. And then afterward, you have the opportunity for another reception where you'll spend time with the cast members and other nine members. People have done this over and over again, year after year, and we invite you to do the same. So please give us a call right now. That's at the, one, uh, at the $12 per month. And in addition, you're going to receive the nine uh, coloring book that has the cast of the Donnybrookers in there. We also want to let you know that if you just want one ticket, you can get that at 
to 120 and just add it up. The, the volunteers will help you decide that. The important thing is that you do give us a call right now, won't you? We appreciate your membership. We depend on you. Become a sustaining member. We're going to build Pentagon City underneath. And we have said this many times that uh, Donnie Bash is our favorite broadcast of the year, but it's not possible without your support. And so we look forward to meeting you. I mean, that's the big deal. And uh, it's not too late to get that Father's Day gift. We've mentioned that. But uh, truth be told, if you enjoy the quality programs here at the Nine Network, this is the way to support it. You know, we are commercial free. We don't stop in the middle of Donnybrook to go to a sponsor. Not that there's anything wrong with sponsors on KMOX, <laughs> but here on PBS, look, we can enjoy all of these programs 24-7 without any interruption. But the only way we do that is when you call us and join us for Donnie Bash. And as I said, Ray, it's really our favorite broadcast of the year. It is, and I'm hoping that we get some of the people we've been talking about tonight. Maybe he'll show up and make it more colorful in the audience. The yeah, Governor get Bryce Stanger. can come. Well, he, uh, he's certainly got some time on his hands. Hope. I hope when Paul hand. McKee shows up, you can all talk to him. And we no, can but have, it, uh, it we can is. have uh, Montevani and Stanger. <laughs> Truly, it's a, it is a highlight, I think, of the year uh, in St. Louis. And I think the viewers uh, certainly bear that out year after year. And uh, we have people coming in from... Uh, I mean, obviously, Mike from Leslie is going to be there and his lovely wife, Karen. And then you've got your, your Greenfield, Green, Greenville. Greenville, I'm sorry, Greenville, Greenville Illinois uh, contingent. But it's something that everybody looks forward to. And it's it, it doesn't seem satisfying enough to go to just one because we see the same people coming back for 10, maybe 15 years. That's really remarkable. Well, do we think, however, that the county executive from St. Charles will be back? He was there. Yeah, I was going to say, well, well, that's what I'm talking about. But didn't, didn't, didn't he end up in the crosshairs of our discussion? Yes, well, the he week, did. Yes, no, he the did, week before, I had criticized him about something. And, of course, he was there. And he's a really nice guy, by the way. Is. He's Great also guy. a very large guy. You know, going out, and I said, oh, my goodness, he's going <laughs> No, but I, I, uh, he's much <laughs> I bigger. Think, than, I think he looks well, good. Most everybody is, but he's much bigger. No, but he, seriously, we do have, from time to time, opinion leaders and, and others in the, in the audience, and as well as a regular, you know, who, in a lot of ways, you know, who, Yale Hollander is a opinion leader. I don't know if he Bill was there. Sure. Yeah. But no, How about but Terry Crouppen made an appearance? Terry Crouppen, yeah. Yeah. There. So yeah. we have a really, and right. we do seriously, regardless of their background, we have a really interesting and informed audience. And uh, we, we, we have uh, one of your old teachers. We did. Miss McGahee was, has been there. And we, we've had, had a couple of we've had, uh, school teachers Mrs. Henderson. be there as well. So, I, right. you know, it's, it's a wonderful evening. It's really just not just you say it's like a Donnybrook audience, but it really is a, just the, the cross threads of St. Louis are there and the different opinions and the different neighborhoods and from Illinois to, oh, people come from as far as way as, you know, South St. Jen and right. Columbia area and all that. And they say, oh, we drove in. And so, and you're staying tonight? I said, no, we're going to drive back. And it's just yeah. like, that's really cool. You know, <laughs> and, for and, us. And people yeah. are so good humored. When you when you look at the kind of screaming and, and the, the lack of polite discourse that there is today on television. And uh, the I think the audience that we have reflects the conversations that we have. Occasionally you get a little heated, but you always go to your corners and you're always friends at the end of the conversation. And that's exactly how they are as well. And, and, and after, after the show, I found that they're always pretty understanding about the four of you. I, they're, now they're, <laughs> they're really, I'd say tolerance is the word that comes to mind. That's so sweet of you. No, I, I think that's 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 they're, they're, they're a very yeah. tolerant group. And they're so proud of you. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. But, well, yeah. what we're saying is please join us September the 27th at the Sheldon, and you can do so by calling that number, and when you contribute, you help uh, KETC. And did we mention you get that Donnybrook coloring book, which it's not too early to start shopping for Hanukkah or Christmas. After all, I mean, uh, wouldn't that look nice? Maybe, Maybe not. Next to a piece of coal. <laughs> next to a piece of coal, Bill says. Oh, yeah. Come on, Bill, we're trying to sell this thing. Um, well, the tickets to Donny Bash are a good deal. Charlie. The tickets are a great deal. Right. Oh, Our my indeed. gosh. As uh, Alfred E. Newman would say, cheap. Right? Didn't he say that? We yeah. said that. What me worry. But what yeah. me worry. Okay. <laughs> Didn't the price of a Mad Magazine, you used to always say cheap? Yeah. Anyway, maybe I'm confusing it with another magazine I used to read as a boy. All right. So we'll see you at the Sheldon, we hope, on September the 27th. Wendy? You brought to our attention this week a very poignant post by our broadcasting colleague, Elliot Davis, one of the all-time greats at uh, Fox 2. And he wrote rather extensively about the shoot shooting of Portia Owens. 
Portia Owens, 28 years old, mowed down by a neighbor this week in front of her three children, and it was just so sad. And uh, Elliot Davis, among other things, said, where is the outrage? Where is the protests? Is this going to be a turning point? What are your thoughts about this one? I was really moved by what by what Elliot had to say, and because it's some it's sort of unprecedented. You know, I think everybody uh, from time to time has had the same thoughts. You know, when you do see the protests uh, or the highway shutdowns over a, a, a situation having to do with the police department, we have to every life, especially. This young woman trying to make a better life for her children and working so hard. And I wondered at the end of the, the post whether it was viewed as helpful to the community or whether it would be considered, you know, oh, Elliot, I wish you hadn't have gone there. And I'm, mm -hmm. I can't speak to that. But I, I thought it was powerful. I thought it was powerful and helpful. But I'd also point out that so far, as of this afternoon, I think I saw on, on stldata.com that the community has reacted. Uh, it, maybe it's not marches and protests, but $150,000 in the first day had been raised in support of her children. It was a horrific crime. And it's one, I mean, you, he's talking about it. Bob McCullough is talking. I mean, a lot of people coming together. And, those, that, the, the, and the, it was the, the a generosity is one are, thing, but well, I think we have to, we, I think I we're, are we so numb to this kind of violence? As I, it no, was, I mean, was, I think I people, people, well, people, in the na people in the neighborhood, Wendy, apparently, are the ones who gave the police the tips. Right. I mean, sure. it, 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 the community worked with the police. I mean, everybody was, I think, outraged and hurt by this crime. And as far as, you know, rallies, I've, I've been to a lot of marches and releasing balloons, and I wish that they worked, but... Uh, right. And, okay. Um, this is a, it's terrible, mm -hmm. okay? And I applaud Elliot Davis sure. for it. Um, Bob McCullough... The reason he had the press conference is because he's running for office. Oh, wow. People get killed all the time, heinous, whatever. Yeah. He's not out there. That was all about trying to get some votes. I don't know from who, but I'm sorry. I'm just not, I'm, I'm not giving him anything for that. It's a terrible crime. Now, this is one, though, because there are so many crimes and murders in our, in our area. But this is one where I think you go back to when this guy was born. And you look at every report card, and you look at where he went to school, and you just you you go through his life, and I think what you will find out is that he's mentally ill. Maybe I think so. that you will find out that he is not all there. Okay. Now, when somebody goes into school and shoots it up, and 17, 18 people are dead, the first thing everybody says is like, "Well, they're mentally ill. It had nothing to do with the gun. It had nothing to do with it. They were mentally ill." All mm -hmm. right. I bet you find out the same thing about this guy. You know. So I, thus, I will say. Alvin, I might disagree with you uh, respectfully about Bob McCullough. I, I'm not here to defend him. But in this particular case, they did arrest the suspect. And as you know, the Washington Post just a week ago pointed out that something like 54, 55 percent of suspects are never arrested. And for some reason, maybe because, you know, the mother was with her children when she was shot and they waited with her uh, while the ambulance mm. was coming, it, it just resonated more than some other cases. Now, maybe it was political ploy to have a press conference, but... I think that, to address your point, Wendy, I think people are on to something. Uh, the clergy coalition, according to the front page of the St. Louis American, is you know, embarking on a campaign to tell people, you, you, you got to snitch. You got to call in the guy who's causing trouble. And, you know, it's, it, it, you know, maybe 20 years from now, we'll also say, well, again, where's the outrage? I heard, I heard your interview with Vervis Jones, and he was talking about the fact that St. Louis was one of the cities in the aftermath of the assassination of Dr. King didn't in riot. Memphis that didn't riot mm -hmm. because of the clergy coalition. And yeah. is it be, I mean, when I was growing up, the clergy coalition was always in the news. And, but I think maybe just because the media landscape has changed so much and some of them are no longer here. Uh, but maybe that has another, maybe that's another component here. Maybe so. I do know about 21 years ago, the late great Greg Freeman had a column very similar to what Elliot Davis just wrote. And it was, I think the title was, Where's the Outrage? And uh, it's, it, it's, it's kind of a conundrum. You know? It is, but there was outrage this time. I guess my point is, and I'm not, I, I think Elliot did a great service by, by, in, his co in his blog, but there is outrage. And I mean, so yeah. we, we ought to at least recognize that. And, uh, I do yeah. think we're also numb. I absolutely right. think we're numb. When we have this many homicides, I think a numbness sets in, I, and you think, what in the world can I do as one person? Yeah, I agree. And this was 
completely just just horrible. Well, and, but yeah. I agree with you that we're be, something will top it. Yep. Yeah. And well, right. right. Well, yeah, it, it's like uh, MoDOT objecting to having those uh, license plate reading cameras mm -hmm. on the bridge. And, and the police will tell you like a lot of the problems downtown, they know the fellows who are coming over and doing it. What, you know, that's something that the mayor should talk to the new governor about and say, tell Mo not, MoDOT not to be so prissy right. about yeah. this. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill, let me ask you about uh, action taken by Kim Gardner, the circuit attorney this week. I'm, she announced that she's not going to prosecute some cases of low-level marijuana possession, 100 grams uh, or is it milligrams uh, or less. It, it's about 10 uh, gummy bears or one brownie, okay, that has THC in it. So it's a very small. Sounds like a good brownie, Charlie. <laughs> That's yeah, a big brownie, man. I, not that I know okay. anything about this. <laughs> this is PBS, so we ask you in okay. advance to respect the decorum of our network. But um, it's certainly not her call, is it, to decide what law she's going to enforce? Is, aren't there other bodies that create these laws, and isn't she expected to prosecute people who violate them? No, I think, you know, I've been a critic of Kim Gardner on many things, but I think she's right on the money with this. And I, I think that the uh, police department should take a page from uh, the circuit attorney's office and say, we're not going to go after low-level pot crimes. And I saw that uh, Jeff Rura of the police association was critical of Kim Gardner. And I remember uh, when the former President of the Police Association, Sergeant Wiegand, what was his name? Wiegand, Gary. Gary, Gary. was a lobbyist for normal mm. while he was a police officer. I don't see what officer. that has to do with Jeff Rorta. I mean, I think he's making, a, he's making a, 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 a decent point that this is, I mean, we know that the only person that Kim Gardner would not prosecute if they got caught with 100 grams of marijuana would be Governor Eric Greitens oh. because she just doesn't <laughs> oh, prosecute okay. Governor Eric Greitens. You know what, I think However, he's no, I, I think that I think Reuters point is 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 an important one that this is not the casual drug user amount. This is more of the dealer amount. Well, I, no, first of all, I she, he's making an indecent point. She was not suggesting that no one will ever get busted. There are many times where they'll use a marijuana arrest to get somebody that's violent or whatever. She was saying that just in terms of pure small pot possession, as a lot of prosecutors around the country yeah. are doing, a lot, as they should. They're not diverting resources. Interesting, last week we were talking about how, I was saying how maybe it's not so great that the prosecutors and police aren't getting along. Well, in this case, good for Kim Gardner. I don't know if you're going to retract your call for her to resign over this, but she's absolutely right about this. We've been hanging on and, a second, Ray. And but is that her fine. call? Yes. After all, um, it's called what, prosecutorial in, in, in the, discretion. It, okay, yes, so in the state of Illinois, they're going to pass a law, we think, to ban bump stocks. And there are some sheriffs and prosecutors saying, we are going to ignore it. At the local level, you can pass all the laws you want restricting okay. guns. We're, gonna We're not going to arrest way. you. So in other words, people are doing whatever they want. They're disregarding the laws that are created because they don't agree with them. Sometimes the people are ahead of the legislature, Charlie. Right. Uh, with, I bump mean, stocks? I mean, with bump stocks? With bump stocks? Well, th that's not one that I would go for. Exactly. But, but, but if, if the people say they want them in uh, Clifford County or something, I'd say, okay. Well, well, that's why we have the legislature or the Board of Aldermen. They're no. supposed to make well, these well, laws. Well, wait. All right. Or, or Congress, where, you know, the possession of any amount of marijuana in this country but is a violation of federal law. said, like, listen, I'm not going to prosecute for this amount or lower. Okay. Now, in wherever these counties are, if we go and go talk to the prosecuting attorney and somebody has a bump stock and it's been outlawed in that state, yeah, they can talk all the mess they want to. This is not having like a, a bag of marijuana. It's having a bump stock. They, well, I, well, I, they've they're, already, they're they've already say, said you that, know, Elvin. We're not going to go looking for bump stocks. Right. If the people in the county think that this is a bad law, we're not going to go looking around for it. That's the way I feel. Right. See, well, I, I think I, that this, don't, but Kim don't you, is doing yeah. the right thing. I don't want these. I don't want so, sheriffs and, and prosecuting right. attorneys unilaterally enforcing laws the way they think they should be enforced. But they do. I mean, and the point is this. Whether somebody says it or not, and I, I'm with Bill. I mean, I don't, the bump stock thing is something that bothers me, but the fact is, whether they say it or not, the fact is prosecutors in every county of every state in the country exercise discretion, all Kim Gardner's doing is enunciating that she's going to use a common sense approach to this that I think the large percentage of okay. people and in the St. Louis agree with. 
Do you think the police arrest everybody they come up on that could be well, arrested? All I you know, know is, that's yeah, not you think true. in Crawford forget. County they care right. about CCW? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, well, these are the people. okay. But well, last summer she threw out four thousand tickets that had been issued by the Missouri Highway Patrol on fifty-five and seventy. I guess hey, whatever. I mean, it's, it's her call, Certainly right? What the they they, out they didn't have the manpower to fulfill them. That was a fiduciary. She, she had the manpower to, to call Donald Tisby out of. Uh, Oh, come uh, on. Michigan. Tennessee you know, or Michigan uh, to visit right. us. Okay. When she needs the manpower, all, she finds the manpower. And the bill for that is about, at what, $150,000 right now. Okay. For, for $150,000, you can process those. You know, that, 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 that's why the new governor should uh, tell MoDOT to put those license plate <laughs> things back. Because, you know, the old governor, okay. you know, he, he was going to stop crime by putting by getting speeders on Highway 40. And that's not what's killing the city. Yeah. The city is not getting killed by people going 65 on Highway 40. The city's getting killed by people what? being robbed and shot downtown St. Louis. Absolutely. When are we going right. to leave Eric Greitens alone? Yeah, right. Actually, right. Hey, I think hey, you're hey, good. Right. We need good to mention his okay. name just for the Here's race. what we're going to do. We're going to uh, ask you to join us uh, this upcoming September 27th for our next Donnie Bash. And we go to Marianne for those details. A program that has lasted as long as Donnybrook has here on the Nine Network must be doing something right. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Carson, and welcome to another Thursday night with Donnybrook. We're very excited about this year's annual Donny Bash. The date is Thursday, September 27th. Once again, it's going to be at the Sheldon Concert Hall. It's a wonderful venue. Uh, some of you have been there before. You know the parking is a dream. And the best thing about Donny Bash is that you can be there as soon as the doors open at 5.30. There'll be time for a reception, have some refreshments. There's wonderful food at Donny Bash. You'll move into the Sheldon, into the concert hall, and you'll see the set of Donny Brook transformed there. But let's talk about getting you to Donny Bash. First of all, tickets for Donny Bash are $60 a piece but you have a wonderful deal when you call us right now or go online. And if you pledge as a, a sustaining member of the Nine Network at $12 a month, you will receive two tickets to Donnie Bash and also the coloring book for Donnie Brook. So that's a wonderful way and it's a great way to be a sustaining member of the Nine Network. Now, if you would like to be a sustaining member at $5 a month, then you will receive the coloring book. And as the folks from Donnie Brook say, you know, if you've never been to Donnie Bash, you don't know what you're missing. The live performance and the taping is really, it's so unique. So if you've never been before, and by the way, Father's Day being just around the corner, can't imagine a more fun and imaginative gift to give your dad who probably has everything that he needs right now. Now at that $5 a month, you'll receive the coloring book. Don't forget you'll receive Nine Magazine for the full year of your membership, plus you'll receive access to Nine Passport. Go online and join us now or give us a call. He doesn't remember my hand on that. Oh my goodness, Disco. we're just reading our coloring book, which is uh, great reading for everybody. And you'll get this when you make that contribution to the Nine Network. And, uh, you know, actually, coloring has become an increasingly popular pastime among older individuals. While at Watch one it, time you. it was only for young people, but now people relax and they kind of meditate by just uh, using crayons. Get a glass of wine or whatever your favorite beverage is and uh, color between the lines. And what are you pointing to uh, there, Wendy? This is just, I mean, this is, to me, this is the hieroglyphic uh, the cave drawing of, of the first Donnie Brook. That's the <laughs> opening of the I show. Love it. I know it, but it does sort of look like it looks like it does, was found in a yeah. cave in Washington County. It, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and people. I, as we said, you could have all sorts of uh, good, wholesome fun with a box of crayons and. Uh, drawing in the face of the people that you maybe uh, agree with or disagree with on the panel. So, so are you are you criticizing cave dwellers? <laughs> no. I kind of, I resemble it was, that It remark. was much more Egyptian than it was cave very, dwellers. Very yeah, Egyptian. Exactly. Yeah. All right, gifts. Great gift, Father's Day, Father's Sunday. Day. Yeah. All right, come on. Two tickets to Donnie Bash, your dad, your granddad. How great would that somebody's be? Somebody's dad. Oh, don't dad. forget. And today's the president's birthday. If you're thinking about getting Donald Trump a birthday yeah. gift oh, I hate and sending it to 1600 Pennsylvania I, Avenue, I said we should hey, invite can him. We, last can year. we keep this civil? We should invite him to join we us. We should send two tickets. Can we keep this civil? Hey. 
Get your father a box of crayons and a six pack and say happy Father's Day, Dad. I mean, I think that would be really fun. He would have, he would get he would a laugh have, off that. Yeah, he, he would. would. It right. depends on how old your father is, Wendy. Yeah, well, at, a, at a certain age, you think crayons, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. It may not be for everybody, but last year when the Donnie Brook coloring book came out, we were coloring it. It's kind of a relaxing, it relaxing experience. It, it is, is very fun. relaxing. It is fun. And of course, so when you contribute to the Nine Network, you help support all the great programs that are here. Everyone has his or her favorite. For some of you, it might be Thomas the Tank Engine. I happen to like the PBS News Hour, which is just before this program. You know, you just can't get a better summation of the day's events with unbiased reportage. And I just think that uh, when it comes into my living room, I just feel so thankful that we have the Nine Network. But it just doesn't happen. We are viewer supported, so. If the spirit moves you, and I hope it does, pick up that phone and uh, buy some tickets for our Donnie Bash. You'll have a good time, and you'll help a good cause at the same time. Agreed. The beautiful thing about becoming a, a member is that if you have been enjoying the programs for a long time, you're not going to watch the programs the same way. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're going to feel invested. You're going to feel like you're doing your part and that is a that's a terrific feeling and you'll love the little lapel pins when they come yeah the little nine lapel I, my pins. wife and i have said that I, at the end of masterpiece theater when um pe people come on and say that like they are you know have actually paid for all this i always we, we always say like i wish i had that much money that i could like give be that, that kind that of person the alpha but in a way and Carmen I, you Reed know Foundation. we could all feel like that by supporting yeah. channel nine and sure. pbs by the way had great coverage and I'm not kidding about this. The raccoon that scaled the building oh. in St. Paul, they had like a, it brought Excellent. a little tear Excellent. to your eye. <laughs> you know, they, she made it to the top, mm -hmm. even though we called it a he. Until no, no kidding. To the top, That's because right? you had to, you could pay her less. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you referred to her I, as a he, he when you were going on the yeah, side yeah, of the yeah, building, good. I don't, you could pay her less. I, I know I'm obviously not, un, but none of us are unbiased on this point, but PBS is, I think, more needed in our country's history oh. than ever in our history ever. of our country, regardless of your politics. Just having a place that isn't just about silos is so important, and it shouldn't be left out. The Channel 9, the R9, the 9 Network, has consistently over the decades been really one of the leading strongest PBS stations in the country and St. Louis should be proud of that right. and for real I mean and, and again it cross party and lines it needs more help it. now than ever you bet. Yeah, right the time when it needs the money without question and it's not just the television what a great website we have and you know you can get these Donnybrook programs anytime anywhere you are thanks to uh, KETC.org and then the station also has this initiative in the community trying to match workers with jobs and there's graduation well, graduation and more yeah. and you know we we talk so much about what it means to you have grandchildren you have you have young children uh what it means to the education of these young minds i think it's a continuing adult education right when you i agree think of what you learn and what you are reminded of just from a history standpoint alone uh the programs that they have on st louis and and really explaining how we got where we're, you know, where we are today, how we, how we got here, uh, it's it's just fascinating. It's a treasure. Well, well like the uh, Casey documentary, which I think is yes. going to air this weekend again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So thank you in advance for your generosity as we return to the programs, of, uh, rather the topics of the week. And Alvin, the St. Louis Board of Estimate and Apportionment, which is kind of a weird governmental body, but in St. Louis, the mayor isn't all powerful. Her power is divided among three people: herself the president of the Board of Aldermen, Louis Reed, and the Comptroller, Darlene Green. Well, it was two to one. Uh, president Green and Mayor Krusen voted to continue the exploration of privatizing Lambert Field, putting a public entity into private hands. And 16 groups were hired as advisors. They'll be paid by Rex Singfield's groups. He's the uh, multi-millionaire founder of the Index Fund, who moved back to St. Louis and believes in privatizing things. So he's going to remunerate these people. And um, what do you think? Is it a good move in the history of St. Louis to privatize <laughs> Lambert International Airport? <laughs> it's one of, one of the more silly moves in a, in a grand line of silly moves. Look, Rex Sigfeld wants to privatize all public entities. Right. So you didn't have to pay me a dime right now to say, after they 
do all this study, he's going to say the airport should be privatized. <laughs> that didn't cost you a nickel, St. Louis. <laughs> he who pays the piper picks the there tunes. There you go. <laughs> right. Well, well, well uh, let's remember that this got dumped on Leiter Cruz's lap. You know, Francis lay on his way Walking out. Walking out the door. Uh, yeah, said, oh, by the way, <laughs> this is an idea. And I don't see anything wrong with saying, okay, we're going to take a look at it. We'll have some people. Now, I wish that Rex Sinfield, who who's, wasn't financing it, because, I mean, Alvin, you make an awfully good point. But the idea of looking at the possibility. I, it, I don't see what's it just wrong. feels so disingenuous <laughs> because they've obviously got the answer. They're studying to find an answer that they've already come up yeah, with, which is privatization. I, I don't happen to believe in privatization of government services, be it prisons or airports or whatever. And the thing about the the one thing I agree with them on is that we should look at the airport not just as a place where planes come in and out, but as an economic development engine. I think they're absolutely right about that. But by doing it the way they're doing it, they're presuming that the city has to let go of ownership to, to right. bring in the that's economic exactly. development things. And I don't see that that's necessarily a, a great idea. You know, when they pick these 16 advisors, too, you know, you, you get Stiefel Nicholas, you get Mike Jones, who was the, I guess, the assistant to Charlie Dooley. You got Jeff Abusi who's a longtime union guy, and you got two donors to President Reed, President Louis Reed, a guy named Charbonnet and a guy named Trowig, who happen to be campaign donors. And coincidentally, they also got some of the uh, uh, contracts for the advisory roles they're going to provide. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is, what's the line? This is so St. Louis. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. You bang your head against the wall, you're going to get a busted head. You ain't going to get, like, any great ideas. So I... I <laughs> But they're not well, in a hurry. Well, I'd like that's, to see the know, figures. <laughs> that's you know, the other thing. Yeah. They don't seem to be in a hurry. Mayor Krusen said repeatedly, "Hey, you know, this is this is not this is not happening anytime soon. This uh, this is this could take one to three years before we arrive at any conclusion." That, well, as you I, point I, out, I just told you, not a nickel. We've already arrived I know what at the conclusion, conclusion is going to be. Hey, Except for Darlene ask, Green, let, God bless right. her. And she said, "Like, hey, airport's doing fine. The city. <laughs> I'm trying to protect the credit rating, which is under fire. We're doing okay. Why are we going to do this?" But let's call Illinois uh, Economic Development and say, like, hey, put a study together and see if we should, at this point, move the airport over to that Columbia Waterloo area. And guess what that study's going to say? But, move it tomorrow. This is, she might, right. have, she yeah. might as well introduce this by saying, spoiler alert, we <laughs> want to move, we want to privatize the airport. Now, back to our regular program. Right. You know, right. it's right. like, come on. They, that's what they're trying to do. Speaking of politics, Bill, let me ask you, this week... Steve Stenger, county executive, signed a measure that'll ban the box. If you're applying for a job in county government, there's a box there that says, are you a felon? And he's going to eliminate that. And he announced that 50 days before the election, roughly. Um, Mayor Slay had banned that, I don't know, a couple of years ago, as did Governor Nixon. Do you think this is good policy? But do you also think it's quite likely that it's done for political purposes? Well, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes uh, Vince Shamel used to say, good government is good politics. And, and sometimes it is. And I think this is a good government thing to do, you know, to, to make it easier for a person who was convicted of a felony to get a job is a good thing. And this doesn't guarantee him a job. It doesn't put him ahead of anybody else. It just means they're not automatically disqualified. And when they go in for the interview, they can even make it part of, part of their story. You know, the, hey, I grew up in a tough neighborhood. I got in trouble early. I've turned my life around. And that's a lot better than just automatically eliminating those people from the job pool. Well, I, then it, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I originally thought that it, because they can ask those questions in the second round, I thought it was just sort of window dressing until I read about the Washington University study and how critically important it is to, to let these people know that they – that they actually have a chance, you know, that, that they could become a viable candidate for a job before they have to say, but when I was a teenager, I, you know, with a bunch of, you know, a bunch of friends one night, we were silly and stole a car or went for a joyride or whatever. They've already, they've already made their case, if you will. So it's, it's not window dressing. I, I don't know if you have to go through a background check to, to have a, a job with the county. Um, Law enforcement and municipal courts, right, so you, you're I, not going there. Right, so but. I don't know if all do, but, but it, it will come out. So I think it would behoove someone to have the opportunity to say, like, by the way, and I don't mean, I don't mean that frivolously, but to say, like, yes, 
I have been convicted of a felony, as opposed to you just don't get the job and you're always wondering, did they find out that I had yeah. a felony yeah. record? Well, I, All right. I, I think they should remove the box, but I'm puzzled by your question, which is, I mean, the premise of your question, which is somehow this is good politics. I don't know why. No, this it is would, good politics. Well, I don't know that removing this box is anybody's particular political cause. Well, sure it is. He's trying to win black votes. Black people go to prison. Yeah. Black people have a tough right. time with you filling know, it's out like, I got to say this. And whether on, let's, whether let's it's staying around about it, it's almost anything he does and today. If he gets up and says, good morning, it's po it's politics. I don't. I just don't see that this is, first of all, I can't imagine this is going to get him any black votes. And Me either. That's I, why it's kind of stupid. But well, I don't I think mean, it's stupid. You know, I, think I think he's just doing issue. it. I, think it's I don't issue. think it's I, right. I think it's a big issue help, in the community now. I don't hear a lot of it. Wait, wait, but why, wait. The point is, it's like at this point, he might as well just go into hiding then because anything he does okay. is going to be political. Oh, he's giving him boy. credit, Ray. We're saying this boy, is a good thing. I think it's a good thing, but I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing. Well, could have done it three years ago. I mean, that's what I'm saying when other people were doing it. It's, you know, it's not like it's a new issue. It would have been good politics from three years ago. Uh, what's, what's happened to the Moonlight Ramble? How many years was it? 55 years? 55 years. And it was announced by a group of radio stations that have the rights to the Moonlight Ramble. They're going to take a year off. Uh, kind of a disappointment. I, I, I'm still in mourning over the loss of Strassenfest. So what do you too. think? No oh. more Moonlight Ramble. I, I just, I'm just surprised. Uh, now, I know that, you know, your station changed hands and, and, you know, maybe the new owners don't want to pay for it or whatever. It's not us, though. I know. All right. I'm just saying that, that things change. That was all that was necessary to say that, hey, you know, there have been some changes in the sponsorship and Let's go from there, but uh, you know, apparently the you know press release had to mention where well, safety and all that, and it just seemed like you're kind of reaching for excuses. Well, you know what you know? is what's interesting to me about this is I don't remember a lot of bloodshed and loss of life. I can't in remember one incident. Moonlight rambles, and I think that this is something that we all need to file away truly, because this is how much things this is how much things have changed. Because if you are part of a broadcast group and you you know things have changed hands i get that i really do this is not you're not storming the beaches of normandy take last year's information make the same calls ask the police to set up the barricades that's how you become a good neighbor in this community that's that's how that's how unimportant it is today to corporate offices and i think that's really sad and i think people who feel strongly about the moonlight ramble because it's important i think they should call hubbard and ask them to please reconsider yeah, it. This, this is again the branch office town syndrome yeah you know, where you yeah. have people from out of town making decisions the what the moonlight ramble right. it's, it's important, important here right. it's and, important yeah. here it and really is i completely agree with wendy and i would add that these same radio and tv stations maybe we should exclude cable mm -hmm. but i doubt it spend a great deal of time reminding St. Louis over and over and over how much they love St. Louis, how they're part of St. Louis, how they, they do more house ads and more self-promotion about how great they are in the community. And this is a good example where I have a hard time believing that it, it, by adding to this narrative without any justification that somehow this is a safety related thing it really hurts our community i can't yeah. imagine that it would be that expensive for them to continue well this. and if i, I, really if have I a were how about if, st louis magazine well we would be I, you know not? nobody asked we'd be if happy I, actually, actually, last, last if weekend I were, of the week, we'd be happy last manager. weekend to your point last weekend of the weekend before kmx did have a very successful program called uncorked mm -hmm. in keener plaza where thousands right. of people showed up for great music and a little bit of wine so and kmx does a lot and of kmx does a lot of that if i'm an enterprise general manager of a station that maybe I'm really you know very proud of their their local their their local vibe then maybe I would oh. say at St. Louis magazine maybe I would be happy say, hey. to be part of this and maybe people knew that this was possibly going to happen but I didn't find out it wasn't going to happen until I read it you know online in the newspaper so thus maybe when there was a question of this might not happen this year you throw it out there and say like right. there's a possibility that this won't happen unless X, Y, and Z happens, and maybe we could have, as a community, made it happen. Exactly. We didn't have the chance. Right. Exactly. Exactly. By the way, speaking of uh, community involvement, the Nine Network this summer does have dance lessons in the media commons, and my wife and I were there for the first one, which I think was it was either salsa or tango or something. But they had a lot of people oh, yeah. outside KETC learning to dance. So go to KETC.org and Wait, learn more about that. Is there any tape of you dancing? <laughs> will, no. you, will, you <laughs> will you be dancing on the stage at Donnie Bash, for uh, example? Uh, uh, Let's hope not.
But no, uh, 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 uh. the tang. Usually, <laughs> yeah. usually Charlie has okay. to have the rose in his teeth before yeah. he can really go for yeah. that. I am uh, not here to be made sport of. You know but what? if you'd like to uh, write us. You can do so, care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street Boulevard, 63108. And before we say goodbye, we would like to invite everybody to join us for, uh, there's the, uh, we appreciate your emails as well as your tweets as well. Um, don't forget, we want you to join us September the 27th for Donnie Bash at the Sheldon. It's our home away from home every September as we raise money for the Nine Network. Boy, that guy's handsome. Oh, doesn't she look good? Look, look good too. Yeah, and uh, you can join us and meet us. We meet about five o'clock or five thirty in the afternoon. Have a few pops, and then the that show guy is looks broadcast. Confused. <laughs> you know, you mentioned a few pops. They show McClellan. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's our man. There he is. Last last but not least. Least. There's uh -huh. Dean Martin. <laughs> yeah. Star of our hanging show. by the men's room. Don't forget to pick up that Try phone. To explain to yourself. We're trying to encourage people. Oh, there's a same there tie. he is. I have the same the tie. same tie. There you go. Yeah, I, nice. It's my only tie. That's awesome. Right. Nice cocktail. That was a deep conversation right there. You're witnessing. <laughs> I but think that's you what we were... do. That's prior to the show when we have a conversation, some laughs, and then there's the program, which of course, as always, airs live between seven and eight p.m. At the conclusion of the live broadcast, we then retire for dessert and. Uh, another beverage or two in the lobby of the Sheldon. And I think things usually break up about 9 or 9.30, something like that. And uh, if you'd like to join us, just pick up the phone or online at 9net.org slash pledge. I hey. think one of the one of the most lovely comments we've ever had was a, a Donnie Bash and a, and a couple that said that they moved into town and that they learned about the city from watching Wonderful. Donnie Brook and came to Donnie Bash as a result of that. Now they get to watch Charlie and dance. Now they get to watch Charlie dance. <laughs> Charlie will dance. That'll cost you more. That'll I'll, cost I'll you extra. I'll pay my $60 for that. <laughs> I, a lot of Thanks, people everybody. Will. See you next week. Thank you in advance for joining us at Donnie Bash.